Man, it's been a minute since I hijacked the channel for a list talking about cruisers, and with the new year, we've got some new bikes to talk about. Not as many as I might like, and that's why there's some usual suspects on this list, but such is the cruiser lifestyle, I suppose. They hearken back to the past so much that they're not even making new models. While that's not entirely accurate, I certainly would like to see something new and cool from the segment that's largely occupied by chromed out barges. But hey, this video is coming out on the day of Harley's first further, faster reveal event, so maybe I've already got egg on my face. Yup, I'm allowing you to peer behind the content creation curtain. It's actually Thursday the 20th, and I'm sitting in my office in sweatpants listening to Mastodon. Time is truly a flat circle. Anyways, we're not here to talk about my work habits. Today we're talking about fun cruisers that you can purchase with confidence, knowing you're going to be able to have a properly good time on. Whether it's laying down a massive line of melted rubber when you're pulling away from a stoplight, or scraping your pegs around the corners of your favorite twisty road, or confusing your other cruiser buddies with a bike that's a bit out of left field, I'm ordering this list from most expensive to least expensive, since we're all a bunch of savvy consumers looking to get the most bang for our buck, right? Let's dive right in with the most expensive bike on the list, but also perhaps one of the most chuckle-worthy, the Triumph Rocket 3, coming in at $21,900. It's a cruiser motorcycle that weighs in at 642 pounds dry, so probably like 690 to 700 pounds ready to ride, and has an engine bigger than that in my Speed 3. What's not to love about that? The Rocket is for somebody who wants to line up next to a Diablo and absolutely obliterate them off the line. It's for the rider who wants more torque than a turbo Hayabusa, but doesn't want to look like a Busa boy. What about some specs? Well, the Rocket has an absolutely ginormous 2,458cc triple. And yes, we are indeed talking about a motorcycle here. The engine is so big that they had to mount it longitudinally, otherwise you'd have to figure out how to straddle a BMW i8 engine between your knees. Oh wait, that's only 1.5 liters. It's putting down 165 horsepower and 163 foot-pounds of torque, which is enough to pucker the buttholes of even the most ardent sport bike diehards because the torque hits at 4,000 RPM. Admittedly, it ends up redlining just a couple thousand after that, so I mean, the party's basically over. But still, 4,000 RPM, that's pretty quick. Also, the new Gen Rocket set an all-time production 0-60 to 60 speed record of 2.73 seconds in factory trim. That is, of course, if you can hold on. If you go to Triumph's website, you can see a video of some Kyle racing a McLaren and drifting around a racetrack and popping wheelies and all that good stuff. And just one more example of the fact that there's two types of motorcyclists out there. Good riders and the rest of us. Let's face it, we do not have the balls to do any of that kind of stuff. Speaking of balls, have y'all heard of this little company by the name of Manscaped? No? How's that even possible? I checked the scripts that I've written for Yammy Noob, and I have over 10,000 words talking about balls and shavers just sitting on my hard drives. Might be hard to explain to somebody if they ever take a look-see inside one of my drives. Oh well. What's another 200? So you already know about the Lawnmower 4.0. It's got best-in-class battery life, wireless charging, trimmer guards, all the bells and whistles developed over four generations of ball shaving experience. You've also got the Weed Whacker for trimming ear and nose hairs because yes, you do need to shave your nose hairs. Nobody wants to look up and see a bunch of bats in the cave. And you can get the Shears 2.0 for a clean and trimmed nails. Also, just don't bite your fingernails. It's nasty. But if you want everything all in one convenient package, perhaps even a perfect perfect package, then do just that. Click the link down below and get yourself the Perfect Package 4.0 for 20% off automatically. You're welcome. Now, moving on to the next cruiser down the price totem pole, it's the Ducati Diavel running you $21,195. Sure, you can spend a bunch of cash and get a fancy black and yellow edition or one painted with biscotti dust or whatever Ducati's cooked up to fleece rich people out of another five grand, but you don't need to live that life. The Diavel is for a sport bike boy who's deeply confused about the path his life is going and isn't quite ready to give up the sport bike power band and handling. You've got a big old V-twin displacing 1,262 cc's, putting down 157 horsepower and 95 foot-pounds of torque. Remember those numbers for later. There's a bike we're going to be talking about, and it's going to be relevant. Anyways, the Diavel weighs in at 492 pounds dry, so I'm going to call it 540-ish fully fueled and ready to ride. 
That's pretty heavy for a sport bike and crazy light for a cruiser, which doesn't help the Diavel's case. Having ridden one of the older models, it doesn't sit like a cruiser, and it makes its power a lot more like a monster than a traditional cruiser. However, if you're looking to carve up a corner with all of your leather-clad buddies in race suits, and you don't want to have to do some yoga afterwards to relieve all the tension in your lower back, then the Diavel is a great option. There are very few compromises made to the handling for the purpose of comfort, which you'd probably expect from the likes of Ducati. Compromise isn't really a word in their dictionary. Now if it was down to the Rocket or the Diavel, I'd probably go with the Rocket so you don't have to deal with Desmos, and one of my buddies has had some issues with his that don't exactly inspire confidence. Number 5, and our last balls to the wall cruiser for the day, is the Yamaha VMAX. Pour one out for the VMAX, my friends, because it's a goner and it's probably never coming back. I guess a $17,999 V4 cruisers just aren't selling like the T-dubs, so Yamaha gave the VMAX the where the red fern grows treatment for the second time. You can still find old new stock, but they're very few and far between. It's no surprise though. I mean, it's a 1,679cc V4 putting down 200 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque. Those are straight up superbike numbers. And like other superbikes, it's got thousands of little computers making sure that it stays tightly wound as a Swiss watch. It's got a chip-controlled intake system, nannies, and so much other muscle bike goodness that they couldn't fit enough gas in the motorcycle. Seriously, if you're on a V Max and you go for a group ride, you're gonna be the guy that everyone points to when someone asks if anybody needs gas. You'll be lucky to get a hundred miles out of a tank. Some of that might be down to the fact that they've only got five speeds in the gearbox for some reason. Not sure why, but lowering the RPM at cruising speeds would probably help a little bit. One of the best parts of the VMAX is that it's got a little screen on the tank that says something on the order of welcome to VMAX every time you start it up. It's like it's throwing a party for itself every time you turn the key. Now the VMAX doesn't have the Ducati's handling chops, but in a straight line there are very few bikes that can keep up with a VMAX from a 40 roll. When the last of these bikes roll out of a dealership, it's truly going to be the end of an era. Number 4, the Harley-Davidson Sportster S costing $15,000. Again, this is last Thursday spite talking, so I have no idea what Harley dropped on us today, but at time of writing, the Sportster S is probably the most fun cruiser on a Harley lot, assuming you can fit on it. First, let's smack you upside the head with some specs. The bike is powered by a liquid-cooled 60-degree variable valve time 1252 V-twin, which might as well be from the Star Wars universe as far as Harleys are concerned. It's putting down 121 horsepower and 94 foot-pounds of torque. Remember those Diavel specs we were talking about earlier? The Harley's putting down 36 less horsepower, sure, but it's only making one less torque, which is damn impressive for their first at bat. Also, the RevMax in the Pan Am is doing about 150 at the crank, so you can potentially see a Sportster go head-to-head -head with a Diavel, which would be seriously awesome. I want to live in that world right there. Having ridden the Sportster S in Sturgis, I can say that it's remarkably solid on the side of the tire, and a lot more nimble side to side than you might expect from a bike with a 160 section front tire. And if you're wondering at home, no, Harley can't be normal, it's the law. The Sportster S is a very small bike though, making it cramped for anyone north of 6 feet tall. At 6 foot 4, my knees felt like they were right up under my chin. However, I am going to overlook a couple of these flaws, maybe calling it treating Harley-Davidson with the kid gloves, because they're actually trying to be good now. I want to see them make a full-size Sportster that us larger folks can ride comfortably with a bunch of different levels of tech, price, and power going all the way from a beginner bike to a full-throttle 100-horsepower muscle cruiser, and they're literally standing on the precipice of that. They just need to want it. Come on, Harley-Davidson. I'm rooting for you. Number three goes to the Indian Scout, coming in at 11999 bucks. This is like a mini American Rocket 3. Yeah, it's not making the massive crazy torque numbers, but it's got the same ethos. Turning is not what you come to the Scout for. It's all about going wide open throttle, dumping the clutch, and leaving a stoplight in a cloud of burnt rubber. This is a bike we spent a lot of time with when we had it as part of our Modern Classic giveaway series before it turned into a scheme for Yam to ride old Ducatis, and it was a lot of fun around town. Until Harley unveiled the RevMax engine, it was the best engine coming out of the States, and it's still pretty damn solid. The Scout is putting down 100 horsepower out of its 1133cc V-twin, which is potent to be sure, but it's a cruiser and we're here for the torque, which is almost at leader bike levels on this. It's 72 foot-pounds. 
Now, what makes the Scout so much fun to me is the fact that it's so long, the weight is so low, and the stock tires are so awful that if you hop on the throttle at the right speed, you basically do a massive rolling burnout. The suspension is pretty woeful too, making it thrilling in air quotes to ride. And you've only got one disc up front. I would liken the Scout to LS swapping some old muscle car and then hoping that 1970s era seatbelt still works. Then again, if you're not a degenerate and ride like a normal person, then you won't encounter any of these issues. But where's the fun in that? Number two is a bit of an oddball, and it's in here because your boy needed to find seven motorcycles to talk about, and partly because I think it's actually a really solid cruiser in disguise. It's the Bonneville Street Scrambler. Contrary to the name, Triumph didn't really give it the full Scrambler treatment, though you do have a bigger front rim and some extremely road-biased knobbies. But what that all amounts to is a plush riding experience that you can ride around the block or around the state. It is crazy comfortable, and the way that the Bonnie engines are set up, the bike barely vibrates when you're hauling down the road at 80 miles an hour. It's got the right sound to blend in with your cruiser buddies without going full dad mode and getting the Speedmaster. If you're interested in trying out a cruiser-ish motorcycle and you've got $11,200 floating around, I highly recommend taking a look at the Street Scrambler. Now last on the list, and my personal pick for the most fun cruiser I have ridden in a long time is the Honda Rebel 1100, coming in at a scant 9,299 bucks. Guys, the Rebel is awesome. It's light, it's torquey, it makes a great sound, and it's one of the best handling bikes on this list. When we had the Rebel in the shop as part of the Modern Classic giveaway, it was genuine surprise just how much I liked this motorcycle. It's packing the Africa Twins 1084cc parallel twin, putting down 86 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque, while weighing in at just under 500 pounds, making it an absolute riot to ride. It's got some nice tech features from power modes to cruise control, which is great given the price point, as well as some nods to the Sportster modding scene, seeing as there's some easy parts to access like the shock and the rear fender. If you want a cruiser that can hang with a sport bike on a twisty road, I would take the Rebel over pretty much any other cruiser. Fact. After an online vote in 2011, Toyota announced that the official plural of Prius is Prii. Goodbye. Well, 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 my little squid, you've made it to the end of yet another Yammy Noob video. Thank you so much for watching. Just for you, got a little treat for you right over here. Brand new video for you. You can watch it, check it out. There's probably some squidding, some street riding, maybe some track riding. Maybe I'm binning my Ducati off-road. Who knows what's going on in that video? You should probably click on it and find out.